All right, Rico, Guillermo. Okay, we went over the rules in the dressing room. That is la regla of Don Camerino. I expect a good, clean fight. Que una pelea limpia. This is for the WBA championship. Obey my commands at all time. Protect yourselves at all time. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. Beat it. Beat it. Taylor Tate for this championship bout. Riggan Joe has used a strength and conditioning coach for the first time. He does look bigger up top, and the fact that he came in one and a half pounds under the division limit suggests, to me at least, that he is in superb shape. The rules are the unified rules here in Nevada. No standing eight count, no three knockdown. Only referee Joe Cortez can stop the fight. Can't be saved by the bill in any round. If there is an accidental foul that ends the fight before four, no decision after that, we go to the cards. So we're set to go here in round number one. In this World Championship encounter, Al Bernstein along with Antonio Tarver and Steve Farhood as we get ready to go. And Riggin Dow already with one of those wild left hands that Antonio talked about. He will throw them. Yeah, I don't think he'll be successful tonight with that punch. You know, throwing it so wild and so wide. I think Rico Ramos is experienced enough to negate that. Well, if we worried about Rigon Dow moving and not coming forward to throw punches, so far at least, in the early stages of this fight, he's doing it. This is the third straight lefty that R Rico Ramos has faced. Amateur experience when we talk about Rigon Dow, well, he wrote the book, two-time gold medals. Rico Ramos was in the Olympic trials in 08. He was a top American amateur. And in terms of professional experience, well, that number eight bouts, that does stand out for Guillermo Rigon Dow. Only 35 rounds. Those are numbers of a young prospect fighting on Showbox, not a guy ready to claim the first or second highest spot in the junior, uh, junior featherweight division. Yeah, if you, you, normally if you're Rico Ramos, a guy like Rico Ramos, you got 130 uh, amateur fights, you're 197, you won a bunch of times. That's pretty good. But when you get in the room with, with Rigondeau, who fought 400 amateur fights and won reports are more than 380 of them, it uh, doesn't quite match up. Halfway through round number one, and it's been Rigondeau coming forward. Now, remember we talked about Rico Ramos saying that he didn't feel comfortable, the nerves got the better of him when he won his world title. Will that affect him here early in his first defense? Yeah, it seems like he's a little tight. It looks like he's a little uh, dry. Don't see a sweat popping off him right now, but he's just gonna have to relax and let his hands go. He's not expect, he can't expect to win around like this where he's really not engaging. He has to start behind that jab and has to trust it. And Sakafumi uh, Shimoda, he threw only 39 punches uh, per round. Average that from the show stats. So he was not active in that fight and had to pull it out with a knockout win. Oh, big left hand by Rigondeau, and Ramos is in trouble. He's down. He is in big trouble. And there is about a half minute left to go in this round. I think that was a push in itself. He was hurt. The knockdown was a push, but yeah. the punch did cause an effect. Rigondeau lands another straight left hand and pushes Ramos back again. Ramos against the ropes, in some trouble. Another left hand. They are raining down on Ramos. And this is what happens when you have a natural right, counterpunch. You sit back and you wait. Sometimes you wait too long and you get hit with a shot. Now here's the inexperience from Rico Ramos, still being a young fighter. Didn't, didn't, didn't move and got hit with a couple more. He sure, right hands. he sure did. Left. Round one is over, but lots of action. Let's see. Looked like it was a right, uh, left hand, excuse me, to pretty high on the forehead. Now, clearly Ramos is in trouble. There's no punch that lands there, and there was enough time between the left hand that hurt Ramos and Ramos going down that I don't think you should have called that a knockdown. Really? Was he hurt? Yes, but watch. He missed that left hand. Hmm. Interest this is an interesting one. Let's go to Chuck Giampa, a former ring official. And Chuck, what's your, your opinion on this one? I, I concur with the referee. I think that was that was a knockdown. Uh, it was an accumulation. There was a little delay, but he did go down, in my opinion, as a result of a punch. Let's pull the panel, Antonio. <laughs> I, I agree, I agree. I know it was the, the, the punch that caused the effect from the knockdown, but it looked like he pushed him and then he was hurt bad, though. Yeah, we head into round number two, and I, Steve, I hate to say it, I'm gonna agree with the other guys. I stand alone and proud <laughs> and proud. <laughs> but you're proud, all right. We head into round number two. That doesn't mean you're wrong. That's right. 
Scheduled for 12, but a shocking development in round number one. Guillermo Rigon Dow, not known as a monstrous puncher. He's more of a boxer, although against Willie Casey in his last fight, he got a stoppage in that, and he was a terror beating Casey in his hometown of Dublin, Ireland, and he has come out with the same aggression here in this fight against Rico Ramos. And now Rico Ramos' mission is to right the ship. Yeah, I, I don't think it could have been a much worse start for Rico Ramos. And to me, in the long rate, in the long term for this fight, the fact that Rigandau's in the pocket and backing up Ramos, that allows Rigandau to bring control up, the pace. Up, and that's not a good thing for Ramos. Ramos thought the left hook was going to be his big weapon in this uh, fight, has not used it yet. And he's moving a lot to his right, which is inviting that yeah. straight left hand from Rigandau. You don't do that against the lefty. Ramos threw all of 15 punches in the first round. You, you, you'd love to see those guys move to the right so you can throw that straight left hand at him, didn't you? Oh, most definitely. But again, <laughs> if you're a slick boxer that has great instincts, you can make a guy miss maybe two, three inches and be in position to land a big shot. But it just don't seem like Ramos right now is mentally in this fight when his championship is on the line. Yeah, there's a lot at stake here. Halfway through round number two, and we wondered who would be the aggressor. It has been Guillermo Rigondeau, that's for sure. The 31-year-old former amateur champion who won just about everything as an amateur. Two-time Olympic gold medalist, as Steve pointed out, won countless world championships. And as a pro, he is 8-0. Criticized when he fought Ricardo Cordoba in a fight on the undercard of Pacquiao and Margarito because uh, he fought a very defensive fight in what was supposed to be his coming out party, but he's not defensive tonight. No, and Rico Ramos, if you told me early on that he wouldn't be punching, I would say because he got countered and he got scared, but he's not getting countered. He, he's, he, Rick and Diaz made the fight and has been leading and hurting Ramos. Ramos has to stop moving to his right and he has to let his right hand go a little bit. And Rico Ramos not getting his left foot outside the right foot of Rigondeau, and you just cannot beat a lefty unless you do that. He's standing right straight in the pocket and not getting to his left, and he's just not going to beat him that way. And when you look at both counter punches, both guys being counter punches, this is what we were uh, somewhat afraid of, that mo both guys will start waiting, nobody's taking initiative to, to be the aggressor, and uh, they're looking for the perfect shot, and sometimes that's not always uh, good. You yeah. want to hit the guy anywhere when it's, you know, you want to land and score points. It's happened a little bit here in round two, although Rigondeau bears a good straight left hand by Rigondeau. That was, that was probably enough to win that round for him, and he'd been moving forward already. So, not a stellar beginning. Reggie Jackson, the trainer of Rico Ramos, a new guy stepping into that corner to uh, talk to him. There's your, there's your top super bantamweights. Yeah, these are, this is my top ten, and the most important name here is the one you don't see which is pound for pounder Nonito Donaire. That's because Donaire hasn't fought at Super Band yet, but he's going to. He's moving up and he'll debut in this division in two weeks against Vasquez, the guy, the former champ who I have number five. If Donaire wins, he'll immediately join Nishioka and the winner of this fight at the top of the 122 pounders. But outside of those top three names, there really isn't much here. Not the strongest of divisions, but pretty strong at the top. The all-time hit king, Pete Rose, who's a very big boxing fan, and he's on hand here to uh, catch the action. And I remember Pete was in a very good eight-rounder with Bud Harrelson at, <laughs> at second base. Remember that? In the playoffs. <laughs> yes, indeed. I think he got the better of that, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, we head into round number three of this scheduled 12-rounder. It has gotten off to a very good start for Guillermo Rigondeau, the... 31-year-old challenger against 24-year-old Rico Ramos, who's making his first title defense of this 122-pound title. Uh, Ramos down in round one, got it together a little bit in round two, but as Antonio pointed out, both men were a little tentative in that round. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, you think about it. Rico Ramos told us he was nervous before his title defense. Rigan Dow, full of confidence, if not cockiness. Well, what's happened in the first two rounds, if anything, just makes the Cuban more cocky and confident, yeah. and Ramos more nervous and tentative. <laughs> Rigan Dow has not lost a boxing match since 2003 in the World Amateur Championships. That's saying a lot. And the power punches tell the story because Rigondeau, with those straight lefts, has landed many more. 
Yeah, and it's not like Rigan Dow is that busy. It's just that Ramos is not punching at all. You know, Ramos looks like a deer stuck in headlights he right does, now. He, he just does. And, and seems like he's thinking too much and just won't trust his boxing ability. And I mean, he's a young fighter still running on the job, but at this stage, he should know it's time to fight. Yeah. And and he, 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 go ahead. I'm no, sorry. go ahead. Well, he did fight this way with Shimoda for six rounds and then scored a one-punch knockout. But we, he's not in with Shimoda now. We may be headed for plan B. From <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to throw that plan A out yet. No, plan A been out the window. It's gone already. All right, a, minute, a little over a minute left to go here in round one. And Ramos now starting to attack a little bit uh, and lands a little bit of a right hand and a little clutching and grabbing. And Joe Cortez will break them up. We mentioned the, the new trainers. Uh, Salas, the new trainer for uh, Guillermo, uh, Guillermo said that, you know, he's helping me set down on my punches, and we saw little evidence of that, certainly in round one. I'll tell you what, both fighters are not fun of trainers because, uh, <laughs> no. you know, I think they both switched three times in their last three yeah. fights, so uh, once they find somebody they can uh, work with, then they'll be on their way. <laughs> Six trainers uh, and two fighters, that's a lot. Good body shot by Guillermo Rigondeau. That's his best punch, that left hand yep. to the stomach. And, you know, he uses the jab only as a range finder. Antonio made the point it's not his strong weapon, which you think it would be more prevalent. But in this fight, he's used it at least as a range finder. Seconds remaining here in round number three. Scheduled for 12 for the 122-pound championship. Rico Ramos defending the first time down in round number one. And things are not going well for him to this point. All right. Them hands a little bit more, baby. Okay. Yeah. Keep stepping over to you. Stepping over to your left. Throwing that right down to the bottom. But you got to come back with that left hook. All right. Double left hook. Okay. That's good. Take a deep breath. All right. Let them hands go. Third round. You gotta let them hands go. All right. Don't get careful. Okay. Okay. When he, when he starts. Repitiendo. Tiene que ir cambiando la mano. I need you to switch them, okay? Don't concentrate in the same spot only, all right? All right, let's do it. Give me the Vaseline, please. Breathe in deep, breathe in deep. 